Caribbean Newsline is brought to you by the Barbados Tourism Marketing Inc. Trinidad and Tobago advised to turn U.S. and U.K. crime-fighting agencies for help as murders continue to rise. That's our top story in Caribbean Newsline for Monday, March 27. From the CMC News Center in Bridgetown, I'm Nicole Best. Good evening. The man who Trinidad and Tobago government has turned to to help it bring the death penalty is advising the administration to seek the assistance of the U.S. Federal Bureau of Investigations, the FBI, and Britain's Scotland Yard. There have been more than 100 murders so far this year, and former AG Ramesh Lawrence Maharaj says it appears there has been a complete breakdown in advanced strategic planning to combat crime in the country. He believes government must take action now, starting with the creation of an investigative team of police who have been vetted by reliable intelligence to start solving the murders and serious crimes for this year. That can be a starting point on which the police can build. The government should immediately make efforts to obtain the help of the FBI and the Scotland Yard investigating team to work with this fully dedicated team of police officers to detect the 2017 murders and serious crimes. This, in my view, would send a signal to the criminal elements that they would be caught if they commit murders and serious crimes. After the start of getting the results for the 2017 murders and, and um, serious crimes, there can be a continuation of the efforts to detect the murders and serious crimes which occurred in the previous years. But the former AG also warned that if the institutions involved in the fight against crime are not properly resourced, then any plan which the government may have to fight crime is doomed to fail. Maharaj said it was also important for the authorities to establish the DNA Bank, which has not been implemented despite legislation being passed since 2000. He said, and I quote, the time has come for the population to see and to feel that the government is declaring a war against the criminal elements and that it has taken steps to ensure that those who commit the murders and serious crimes will be caught. End of quote. Jamaica's Prime Minister Andrew Holness says the CARICOM agenda is not dead. It just needs some new blood. He made the comments as he addressed the post-convention rally of Grenada's ruling New National Party on Sunday. Holness said despite questions about its relevance, CARICOM is vital to enhancing regional integration. Like everything else, sometimes it may lose some steam. Sometimes its relevance may be called into question. But when I stand here and I look down into the crowd, I could very well be in Jamaica or in St. Vincent or in St. Kitts or anywhere else. Because though we are separated by the, the, the waters of the Caribbean Sea, we are one people. The Jamaican leader told the crowd of NNP supporters that the time is right for a new generation of leaders to push the integration agenda forward. And a new generation of leadership must emerge with a new vision as to how to strengthen CARICOM so that it can serve the people so that you can travel from Jamaica to Grenada directly without having to go to Miami to get here. Transportation within the CARICOM region is a big issue and the next generation of CARICOM leaders need to spend some time to figure out how we're going to truly look at an economic integration that is underpinned by how we can 
move around the region. Meantime, wholeness has praised the fiscal discipline of the people and government of Grenada in executing their homegrown structural adjustment program. He said reducing Grenada's debt-to-GDP ratio from 108% to 75% in three years is a feat that must be commended. From what I have read and what has been reported, the fiscal discipline of your government has been exemplary. When we see that you are getting 5% average growth, 7% on the high level, and this year it is reported that you will get 4.2%, your economy is doing well, and you should be proud of your government. Prime Minister Dr. Keith Mitchell agreed that the country's current economic success did not come on a whim, calling the lowering of the debt-to-GDP ratio a miracle. That we have did not come about just so. The payment of unpaid claims did not come about just so. It was the sacrifices of a lot of people. And the leadership of the team of the new National Party, your cabinet that you gave us, sisters and brothers. And therefore, sisters and brothers, to move from 108% debt to GDP ratio to 72% was miraculous. Jamaica's main opposition, People's National Party, the PNP, no longer has the country's first female prime minister at its helm. 68-year-old Dr. Peter Phillips was on Sunday elected as the PNP's fifth president, taking over from Portia Simpson Miller, who led the party since 2006. The handover occurred at a special delegates convent, that's conference at the National Arena, where Simpson Miller urged supporters to stand beside their new leader. Upon assuming the presidency, Phillips took a public oath of office. He pledged to address several pressing matters, including poverty and homelessness. Simpson Miller will step down as leader of the opposition on April 2. Antigua and Barbuda's Prime Minister Gaston Brown is pointing an accusing finger at the International Monetary Fund, the IMF, saying it has been pushing his administration into entering another agreement. In 2013, the Washington-based financial institution said the island had successfully completed the 102 that's the 121.9 million U.S. dollar standby agreement, despite considerable challenges, and that the aims of the program signed with the then Baldwin Spencer government were largely achieved. Speaking on radio over the weekend, Prime Minister Brown said, although his near three-year-old government had done well economically, about 10% of Antigua's loans stock is delinquent. And he said the economy is so vulnerable that the IMF has been pushing his government back into another program. But Brown insists that under no circumstances would his administration be going that route. We have a block of loans called the Paris Club Loans that are delinquent up to today. And with all fairness to the UPP, they inherited those loans from the former Labour Party administration. But the reality is the country's economy is still very, very vulnerable. The country's finances are still inadequate to meet its commitments. Many of you may not be aware of this, but the former administration had given the IMF that they would have gone back into another IMF program. Coming up in Caribbean Newsline, the region says its final goodbye to late Nobel laureate Sir Derek Walcott. That story and more after the break. Stay with us. Edition of Antigua Sailing Lake. Not a sailor, not a problem. Chase the race from the best beach locations and party in the ocean. On our beaches, a different one each day. Take a drink, take another, hula, play, dance in the sand. Dance to reggae, to soca, to the beat of your own drum under the moonlight. Seven beach days and party nights. Come play at the 50th edition of Antigua Sailing Lake. April 29th to May 7th, 2017. Are you up for the challenge? It's not about exercising. It's having the strength to do what you're passionate about. 
It's not about the road traveled. It's about the one to be traveled. An important thing in life is finding the perfect balance between body and soul. With a bottle of Ensure, you get the proteins, calcium, and 26 vitamins and minerals your body needs to live the best moments of your life with strength and energy. Your life, your health, your Ensure. With the CARICOM Single Market and Economy, CSME, opportunities to relocate for work as a CARICOM Skilled National have been expanded to include 10 categories of persons. Two of those categories are artisans and household domestics holding a Caribbean Vocational Qualification or CVQ. A CVQ is a certificate you can apply for based on how well you do your job. If you are certified as a household domestic, including housekeepers and home health workers, or an artisan, including persons in the building trade, craft persons, and machine operators, you could be eligible to move for work. CVQ standards have been developed with regional employers, so your skills will be recognized wherever you go. Contact your national training agency to find out about CVQs for artisans or household domestics, or visit csmeonline.org for more information. The CARICOM Single Market and Economy. Make it work for you. St. Lucian Nobel Laureate Cedric Walcott went to his final resting place amid unwavering praise and admiration of his talent, influence and work as mourners bade farewell during a state funeral service at the minor Basilica Cathedral in Castri, St. Lucia on Saturday. The Nobel Laureate, who died on March 17 at the age of 87, was eulogized during the just over two-hour state funeral service as a man who gave Caribbean people an opportunity to have dreams and have visions. Delivering the eulogy, his longtime friend, Professor Emeritus Edward Baugh, remembered the late poet as unassuming, generous, never one to blow his own trumpet, considerate of others, a kind, loving, and responsible father, and a doting grandfather. He said Sir Derek helped the Caribbean articulate its engagement with history and with the colonial legacy, and he gave a voice to Caribbean people. We mourn and we celebrate a genius who was a prodigy, a maker, a Caribbean man who has made us and the world see more clearly Caribbean landscape, Caribbean light. But we also mourn and celebrate a person, someone with the virtues and the shortcomings that defined him as the person whom those who knew him valued. Governor-General Dame Pule Louisi and Prime Minister Alan Chastanay led the local and international dignitaries at the funeral. Walcott, who is survived by his three children, Peter, Elizabeth and Anna, was buried at Montfortune. Police in Dominica have denied the main opposition United Workers Party, the UWP, permission to stage a march in the capital on Thursday. In a March 24 letter to the UWP, Public Relations Officer Nicholas George, Police Commissioner Daniel Carbon, said the denial was for public safety and national security reasons. He also warned the party that organizing or taking part in any public procession without written permission from the commissioner is a crime. The UWP had written to the police on March 15, seeking the green light for the march as it continues to press for the removal of Prime Minister Roosevelt Skerritt and his government. An opposition meeting on February 7 resulted in violence and vandalism in the capital and led to several opposition members being arrested and some of them being charged. A general strike and widespread protest over high crime and economic hardship have paralyzed French Guiana. Hundreds of people have taken part in protests blocking roads to neighboring Brazil and Suriname, prompting the U.S. government to issue a travel warning for the French territory in South America. The unrest has shuttered schools and blocked access to the main airport. The collective of 500 brothers, the group largely behind the unrest, is demanding that the French government send a minister to negotiate with them. 
The French minister Bernard announced on Monday that a delegation of ministers would travel to the South American territory by the end of the week to try to address demands by protesters who have refused to negotiate with lower-level officials. We get more in this special report from our partners at France Caribe Broadcast. These images were made by residents in the neighborhood of Cayenne. You can see a group of people attacking a car passing by the assailants, expelling the driver of the vehicle, which backs down by force. This incident is only one of many examples of what happened during the night in Cayenne. Several parts of the population have been involved in revolt movements. Many young people, aged between 10 and 20, according to the police, have ransacked and destroyed throughout the night. In a press conference, the prefect returned to the situation. How is it that their parents didn't pay attention to what the children were doing? Then, of course, there is a work of repression, of public order, which is hers. But I would like everyone to see also what the children do. A 10-year-old child on the street shouldn't be behind the garbage and shouldn't swing flaming cans, neither on the police nor on the passers-by, and he should not participate in violent actions ni sur les passants et il ne doit pas participer à des actions violentes. A crisis staff was organized in the prefecture to coordinate a particular device of nearly 120 police officers and gendarmes in Cayenne in addition to, in addition to agents already present on the ground. The departmental intervention company that usually serves us security is fully mobilized on these roadblocks and on the maintenance of order. The main difficulties at night was the China's quarter. If there is no reason to move so much, stay quietly at home. In 2008, we were in front of government that was at the beginning of its mandate. Today, we are first with a government that is at the end of its mandate. So, I want to say to the population that the fight we are leading is an endurance race. So, we must arm ourselves with patience so that the mobilization can continue. In any case, the message is clear. We have a list of demands and we stick to it. They can do what they want. They can put us in jail, tell us that we have no reimbursement. You have already asphyxied us. You have already killed us. You have already killed the farmers. We are at the end of the rope. It has never been seen in French Guiana. We, we are tired. We thank our partners over at France Caribe Broadcast for that report. And we encourage you to join us every Monday for news from the French West Indies. And ahead in Newsline Sport, West Indies go down to Pakistan by six wickets in their opening T20 International. Stay with us. Sport is next. In a place where legends start, the beach is just the beginning. So live a little for the exhilaration and the color of every moment. Where time is and life is a spirited event. Immerse yourself in the culture, the music, the people, the island. Love Antigua and Barbuda. Embrace an experience that leaves you breathless. From cricket to sailing week to carnival and more. Antigua and Barbuda, the beach is just the beginning. Round Hay Pharmacy now has two locations to fill your prescriptions promptly and efficiently. Our branch at One Accord Plaza is open daily, including Sundays and bank holidays. Also, check out our new drive through location at Warren's Healthcare Complex in Michael, the first and only drive through pharmacy in Barbados. For more information, call Round Hay One Accord Plaza at 421-7863 and our new drive through branch at Warren's in Michael at 424-5574. Barbados, renowned for its pristine beachfront and fantastic weather, continues to leave quite an impression on newcomers to the island and returning visitors. The Caribbean island, quite popular as a vacation hotspot, is not only beautiful due to its natural aesthetics, the island of Barbados continues to grow in popularity because of unique connections developed with our people, our culture, we can't wait to welcome you.
Amutud West Indies displayed little of the bluster that made them world champions as they slumped to a six-wicket loss to Pakistan in the opening T20 international of the format series in Bridgetown on Sunday. West Indies struggled to get going and could only muster a paltry 111 for eight of their 20 overs at Kensington Oval. Only captain Carlos Brathwaite, with an unbeaten 34, looked the part. He was the lone batsman to pass 20. The horse was stunned by guile of debutante teenage leg spinner Shadab Khan, who took three for seven in four superb overs and claimed man of the match honor. Triple one for the loss of eight, started off with that big shot, the left-hander against Mohammed Hafiz. And uh, then it, it was this fielding effort that got things working well for Pakistan. Emma Shazad with a direct hit knocked out the, the stumps. Batsman was run out. Hassan Ali was picked off for a six. Samuels working the ball into the gap for a four. Imad Basim. Coming on to ball, but the uh, umpire's not for that, even though that ball showed it as missing the leg stump. Shadab Khan was introduced, picked up the wicket of his second ball with a wrong run. Then another one, precious scalp of Lyndon Simmons, played on. The fun continued for the leg spinners. Sunil Narayan promoted up the betting order, was caught at long on, straightforward catch. Hassan Ali's variation that provided him with a wicket. And there was uh, a catch which was floored by Kamran Akmal. And then a few uh, big shots attempted by Breathway. This was down the ground and uh, well, the ball held up against the wind. Uh, was seen there picking up that cash to get rid of uh, Pollard and then this forehand smash down the ground for a massive six then a drive through the offside for a four against Wahab Riaz Last two or three overs but this looked pretty energetic a little bit of improvisation from the captain then a hit and what a shot this was from Hassan Ali, lost that one, but in the end it was a easy. And in reply, Pakistan never really looked in danger and overcame a few early hiccups to reach their target in the 18th over with the ever-dependable Shoaib Malik taking the visitors over the line with an unbeaten 38 off 29 balls. Babar Azam, who shot to prominence with a string of one-day hundreds against West Indies last year, made 29 while shotgun Kamran Akmal struck 22. Seema Jason Holder was the best bowler with two for 27. He did early wickets, didn't uh, start that way with the run starting to flow. Ahmed Shazad finding the boundary and Robin Powell almost doing himself an injury, failing in the hurdles attempt. Then with the boundary starting to come, the feeling would have been that Pakistan would have romped home. So on the line, short and wide, rare for him. And then a dismissive stroke from Ahmed Shazad before the bowler got his own back. Outside edge, simple catch to the wicketkeeper. And the West Indies fans getting something to smile about. The same over though, Barbara Azam going with the boundary. And the, the target, too little for the West Indies to allow these luxuries. This was miscued into the hands field a deep in wicket and then another wicket and it was at this point when Carlos Bradford took the catch despite the collision with the keeper that the West Indies would have felt they had a chance but that quickly evaporated. Shoaib Malik so very experienced in any conditions in any circumstances and Babaraza taking their team closer and closer to the target. By this point it was just a matter of when not if but at least Holder got the satisfaction of a second wicket. Malik depositing this high up into the 3W stand 
and finishing off with a trademark boundary that any of Weeks, Worrell or Walcott would have been proud of. Over to football, MLS star Kevin Molino scored the only goal as Trinidad and Tobago revived their 2018 World Cup dream with a 1-0 victory over Panama in their all-important CONCACAF final round qualifier in Port of Spain on Friday night. TV6's Sergio Dufour was at the Hazley Crawford Stadium and files this report. Kevin Jones walked out with the captain's armband hoping to get the Trinidad and Tobago on track towards the qualification for the World Cup. And the TNT came out with purpose. They enjoyed the better of the early exchanges with Jovin Jones and Kevin Molino looking impressive up front. Panama had some chances as well, but they never seemed threatening enough to jam Michael Williams in goal. This was until the 37th minute when Kevin Molino collected and had enough time and space to fire past the keeper. 1-0 in favor of the home team and the fans couldn't control their excitement. Williams pulled off a few good saves thereafter as TNT looked to be taking control of the game in the first half. On the resumption, Panama played with greater intensity. Still though, Jones was an imposing figure up front. He had a few cracks at goal as well before Dennis Lawrence made a couple substitutions. In particular, Jamil Boatswain came on for Kenwin Jones to spark some life back into the TNT attack. However, the home team played it deep into their half but defended well enough to see off the pressure applied by their opponents. They were also helped along with some poor finishing by Panama. In the end, though, TNT did enough to take three points from the match ahead of their next encounter against Mexico. Head coach Dennis Lawrence says Trinidad and Tobago's celebrations over the Panama victory will be short-lived as the side must now focus all their attention on Tuesday's massive clash against Mexico in Port of Spain. The hosts mark their first win of the campaign after losing their opening two games against Costa Rica and Honduras last November. But Lawrence warned his players that while they needed to enjoy the result and take confidence from it, Mexico will provide an even bigger challenge. We could enjoy it only for five minutes because the focus goes immediately on to Mexico. Um, we have to start preparing. We have to try and take advantage of the, the situation that we're in. The boys are on a high at the moment, but we need to start immediately you know, focusing on Mexico. But in general tonight, I can't fault the boys for the effort. I thought they all worked very, very hard. They worked as a group. And they try to give, um, they try to give the public something to say, well, look, these boys are here fighting for the country. TNT came away from their match against Panama with an important three points. And that's the sport. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Caribbean Newsline is brought to you by the Barbados Tourism Marketing Inc. Awards for Excellence invites nominations for its next awards cycle in the categories Arts and Letters, Science and Technology, Public and Civic Contributions, and Entrepreneurship. Join the growing college of distinguished laureates from throughout the region we've honored in the last decade. Visit www.answercaribbeanawards.com for forms and instructions. Nominations close on March 31st. Round Hay Pharmacy now has two locations to fill your prescriptions promptly and efficiently. Our branch at One Accord Plaza is open daily, including Sundays and bank holidays. Also, check out our new drive through location at Warren's Healthcare Complex in Michael, the first and only drive through pharmacy in Barbados. For more information, call Round Hay One Accord Plaza at 421-7863 and our new drive through branch at Warren's in Michael at 424-5574. Again, the major developments of this day, former Trinidad and Tobago Attorney General Ramesh Lawrence Maharaj advises government to turn to the FBI and Scotland Yard for help as murders continue to rise. And in sport, West Indies slumped to a six-wicket loss to Pakistan in the opening T20 International of the format series. That's Caribbean Newsline. For news and sport around the clock, log on to carnanews.com. We'll be back here again tomorrow. But from all of us at CMC News, Thank you for watching and do have yourselves a good night.